Welcome everybody. I see you're all coming in from the waiting room there. Welcome to Crochet 103 with Darren. He's modeling his handsome cowl there on screen. A <laughs> uh, couple things before class begins. We are going to take questions from the chat. Um, either I'll be in there answering them directly or I'll forward them on to Darren. I'll also put the handout in there to download if you need that again. And otherwise, I'm going to leave it up to Darren to show us how to increase and decrease. Okay, so um, welcome everybody. And maybe we want to switch to the view of just my hands so I can start demonstrating. One second to reposition. Hopefully the sound will be okay. You can let me know, is the sound all right, Claire? A little bit muffled. A little bit muffled. All right, hopefully that'll be okay. I think that'll be all right. All right, so I don't know if everyone has the handout, but here is the handout with all my lovely notes on it. Um, just as a base, it, the handout is instructing us to chain 18 stitches and then work 15 double crochets across just to give us a start to work into. You might not want to work along with me, but you might want to, um, you know, if you're doing this later, you can follow along. Um, the yarn I'm demonstrating with today, right now is Hometown Bonus Bundle. And this is a super bulky yarn and I'm using a nine millimeter hook. Um, the pattern that I displayed earlier, this pattern- Sorry, Darren. The sound was good and then it got muffled again. Okay, so this, this pattern here, is using um, Heartland um, yarn, worsted weight, and that's what, if you want to make the pattern, that's the yarn you'll be using with a Heartland, I'll show you a picture of that right here. And that is a worsted weight, you'll be using around a J hook for that. So that's why I'm using two separate kinds of yarns, just one for demonstration. So you don't need to buy this yarn if you don't want to, but it's a very nice yarn. The other one is the one for the pattern. So I uh, will review a double crochet. So double crochet. Darren, is, is there maybe something over your speaker on the computer? Is that better? Talk a little bit, because it always sounds good for a few words. For a few minutes. Okay, so I'm going to do a double crochet to demonstrate. So when you start a double crochet, you want to have three chains at the beginning to give you the height for the row. You do a yarn over and then you go into the first stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, bring through two loops, yarn over, bring through two loops. And that is our double crochet. Um, there. And there's another way of starting your row, and I want to demonstrate that for you right now. So I'm going to pretend I'm just ending this row. So I'm going to do my final double crochet at the end of this row. So there's my final double crochet. Now I'm going to do my chain three, which builds up the height for my next row. And we're gonna put a stitch marker in the chain. So the one that's on your hook, and that doesn't count. So we're gonna put a stitch marker in the chain here, the last chain you made, okay? And then when we turn our work, what happens is we end up skipping this first one. And I'm gonna show you why, how that can make a difference. So yarn over, we're gonna skip the first one and we work all the way across doing our double. And I'm not gonna go all the way across just because 15 stitches is a lot for you to watch. Okay, so, okay, pretend that I went all the way across and 
now I'm going to do chain three to build up the height for my next row. And I'm going to put a stitch marker there. And you'll understand why the stitch markers are important here in a few seconds. Turn. And again, we're skipping the first one. And then you'll see here now why that was important. Okay, so here is my turning chain right here with that stitch marker is marking it. Here is my last stitch, my last double crochet. But now what we're going to do is something different. This is new. We're going to do our last double crochet in that turning chain. So that's why it was important to mark it with the stitch marker so it's easy to find. So I'm going to go in that last, my last stitch is going in the turning chain. So I skip the first stitch and I'm using my last stitch in my turning chain. So my stitch count will be the same. I kind of messed that. Oops. So sometimes it's kind of hard to get it in that chain stitch. Okay, and then chain three to build up the height for the next row. Put the stitch marker to mark the last chain. Remember the one on your hook does not count. Turn your work. And then we're gonna skip the first one. So I'm skipping that first one but it's like we're putting an extra one on the end. So we're skipping one, but then we're adding an extra one on the end. So that's why our stitch count will not change. And I'm gonna show you, I made some samples to show you what it looks like done this way. So there are two different ways to do your beginning and ending of your rows. Oh, Darren, when you get to working in the turning chain this time, can you hold the work up a little bit closer so we can see exactly where to go in? So the most important thing is that when you make those three chains that you put a stitch marker in the last chain because that'll help you find it. Um, so if you pull, kind of pull that stitch marker up a little bit, then you'll find it right there. So that's where I'm gonna, can you see that? Is that clear? Right there. And so you'd go right in there. This time it worked a little easier for me. And then you bring it through. If you finish your double crochet, do three to build up the height for your next row of double crochets. Move your stitch marker. Now, if you get really good at this, you don't need stitch markers, but I always like a stitch marker. So I recommend keeping track of your stitches with stitch markers. I really like them. So, and if you were with me last week and you saw the way we did it last week, this is more of a standard edge where you don't skip any stitches and you don't go into the turning chain. And what happens is with this big yarn, it's really easy to see. You get kind of a ruffled edge. You don't get a super straight edge. Now that doesn't bother me at all, but that might bother you and it might bother some people. So if you don't like that, if you do it the way I just showed you, you end up with a much straighter edge. So you see how that edge is much straighter compared to this one. See that one's kind of a fluted edge and this one is much straighter, but then you end up with a slightly larger hole here. So it's almost like you can decide what you like better or what you'd like the least and then you know, live your life accordingly. So this one is um, with a straight edge, 
where you skip the first stitch, work your stitches across, and you do your last stitch in the turning chain. Now, if you're doing single crochet or half double, you do it the exact same way. You do whatever stitches you're supposed to be doing, but you do the last stitch in the turning chain, chain up the appropriate number of stitches for whichever stitch you're doing, put your stitch marker to mark that spot, and move forward. Any questions about that? I recommend you pick which one you like best, and that's how you should probably do all your projects. <laughs> Any other, any questions about it? I would just remind everybody that yes, Darren said, you know, start your project and stick with it. Because if you switch in the middle of the project, your stitch count will change and you don't want yeah. that. No. Okay, so I'm gonna double crochet. So now I'm gonna go back to the little pattern, the little edging or the little um, handout that we have. Um, and it's asking us to, um, to do single crochet in the back loop of each stitch across. So this is a technique that can add different types of texture to your work. So if you're doing it in the back loop, it'll, it'll look a little different. So it's asking us to do single crochet this time. So if I'm gonna do a normal stitch, I find that spot, that little hole, and I, I go through and I have both loops on my hook. But if I'm working through the back loop, you only go through the back of the loop. So, um, so you find that like V shape on the top and you're gonna just go through one loop. Okay, and I'll show you that again. So there, if you look at the top of it and you find that V shape, you're kind of splitting it. You go right in between. Does that make sense? And that creates a new texture and I'll show you what that looks. It's a subtle texture, it's not a huge. Let me just do a couple in a row and then I will show you what it looks like. Okay, so if you see right here, you get this row of, um, looks like a, a row of bars or a row, like a, an edge. That's what happens if you do it in the back loop, you get this edge. So if you um, did that on the edge of a, um, like a sweater or something, sometimes you'll, on a, on a hat, you'll crochet a small, like, a, like eight stitches. And you'll do this always in the back loop. And then if you turn it this way, it looks like knitted ribbing and it kind of, it's kind of stretchy. So that's sometimes how you'll end up doing that. And then if it instructs you to do it in the front loop only, um, so single crochet in the front of the loop, you just go through here. So it's the same theory, it's basically the same principle. And so if I were gonna do a normal crochet, I would go through here and go through both, but for just doing crochet through the front of the loop, you go right through there. So just the front loop. And that creates the same texture, but on the other side. So if you are working on the back of a project and you wanted to add that texture to the front of it, this is how you could create that effect. So you can see on this side, it doesn't look any different, but if you turn it over, you're seeing that edging, that little line on that side. So that's crocheting through the front of the loop and the back of the loop. Okay, so now for increasing, let me rip this out. So are there any questions about that, um, crocheting in the front or the back of the loop? Andrea wondered, and I think this was when you were showing back loop only, what it looks like on the opposite side of the fabric. Um, on the opposite side, you don't, it doesn't really look any different. So like when I showed the, um, real quick. Oh, that's 
differently. So it's not going to make much difference at all when they back. Just so you probably wouldn't even notice it so much on the back, but on the front, you kind of get this um, that textured kind of rid that edging, that little textured rib there. Okay, is that is that answer that question? Okay, so for now our increases. I'm going to chain three for an increase for double crochet. Um, so to increase with double crochet, I'm going to first. I'm just going to do a double crochet to give me a little head start. And if you increase, so we're going to take this one stitch right here. And we're going to take one stitch and turn it into two stitches. So for double crochet, you yarn over, enter the stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, bring it through two, bring it through two. And that's a normal double crochet. Now we're going to go through the same place that we just went through. So yarn over, enter the same stitch as previous, and you're just going to do another double crochet. So what we've done is we've taken one stitch and turned it into two. So the next one is just a normal double crochet. And I want to show you how to do, if you want to do a two stitch increase, you can do three double crochet and it'll increase it twice. So in this next stitch, we're going to do three and we're going to take one stitch, turn it into three stitches. So that's a two stitch increase. So enter. And so this is really very easy. Don't. Okay, so you can see all I did was just do three double crochets in this exact same spot. So it's very easy. I think everyone can do that very easily. And I want to show you now how to do the decrease. So since we did our increases, let's show how to decrease. So for decreasing, um, we're going to take two stitches and turn them into one. So I'm just going to do just a double crochet to kind of move me away from where I was working before. So you yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch. And I have pull up a loop and I have three loops on my hook. Wait a minute, I was thinking half double, sorry. Let me start over, I was looking at the wrong thing. So we yarn over, insert the hook, Yarn over, bring up a loop, and you have three loops on your hook. So we're going to yarn over again, bring it through two, and now I have two loops on my hook. Yarn over, insert that through the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, bring it through two, yarn over and bring it through all three. And so I've taken these two stitches and turned it into one stitch. So now I'm gonna do just a normal double crochet and then I'll show you that again and then you can ask me questions. Okay, so we're gonna yarn over, insert the hook in the next stitch and then yarn over and bring up a loop. I have three loops on my hook yarn over, bring the hook through two loops. Now I have two loops on my hook. Yarn over, go in the next stitch, bring up a loop, 
yarn over, bring it through two loops. Don't split your yarn. I almost split my yarn. Yarn over, bring it through the final three. And you can see right here are two stitches and then they merge into one. They become one stitch. So that's decreasing by one. And you'll do this a lot on the top of hats or if you're making lace sometimes. Um, and the cowl that I made for this, um, the increases and decreases help create the zigzags. Okay, so there, are there any questions about that? Do you wanna see it again? Any particular part that was confusing or that didn't show very well? Let's see here. We did have a question. Um, how would the pattern tell you how to increase or decrease? Usually it just says two. So like here in this pattern, it, it tells us it's an increase row. This one says um, to double crochet two times in the second stitch. And then it's telling us to double crochet in the next stitch and then double crochet three times in the next stitch. So that's how this one is instructing us. And then the decrease row, so it's telling us here that there's gonna be a decrease. Um, chain three turn, um, and then it's double crochet two together. So that's how that one is instructed. So double crochet two together is the abbreviation. And then right here, it's double crochet three together. Okay, Any, does that explain that? Any more questions? We so did you want to have a couple people who wanted to know how you would decrease three together. Okay, well, that's good because that's the next thing on my list. So we're gonna yarn over to start with, enter the stitch, Bring up a loop, yarn over, and bring it through the two loops. Yarn over, enter the next stitch, yarn over, and bring up a loop, yarn over, and draw through two loops here. Oops, I must split my yarn. And then we yarn over insert the hook in the next stitch. So you end up with a whole bunch on your hook, but that's okay. Yarn over and bring up a loop. And then you yarn over, bring through two, yarn over, bring through two, yarn over, bring through all three. And that's what you end up with. And then I'm gonna do just a double crochet at the end to show you kind of how that pulls your, so you can see it, see how my, my swatch is kind of shaped like that now, because I had a huge decrease, or decrease here and then decrease by two here. And then I did one stitch. And so that's pulling my, it's reshaping my swatch. So that's kind of how you can almost see how it would create a, a chevron pattern by just doing that. Do we want to see that again or how does that, how do we feel about that? We had, we had a request, a couple of requests for um, decreases with other stitch heights. Okay, so which one do you want to see? Let's do single. We had single crochet and half double crochet requested. So they're all pretty much the same, um, but not really, I guess. Okay. So single, so with single, you don't do a yarn over to start with, right? So single, you enter the hook, bring up a loop. My yarn's getting ready because I've only done it so many times. Bring up a loop. So that's the first stitch. Enter the second stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. So that's probably the easiest one. So you bring up a loop, bring up a loop. So you're gonna do three together, bring up a loop, yarn over, 
string through all three. That's the simplest one, I think, because it's just less yarn overs to involve yourself with. And for half double, so half double is the first stitch that you start with the yarn over. So you yarn over, insert your hook to the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert it into the next stitch, yarn over, bring up a loop, like one, two, three, four, five. Yarn over and bring it through all five. My yarn's getting ratty because I keep reusing it. But there you go. So yarn over, enter the loop. Yarn over, pull up a loop, you have three. Yarn over, insert into the next one. Yarn over, bring up a loop. Now we have five. One, two, three, four, five. And then yarn over, this is if we're gonna do three. So yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch. Yarn over, bring up a loop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yarn over. And then you pull it all. Sometimes you kind of have to tease it through. And if you have new yarn, it's easier. And then I'm just going to do one at the end, just kind of finish it off. Okay, so that was single and half double. Do we want to see that again, or how do we feel about it? Do we want to see triple? Or is that too crazy? So no questions about um, decreasing with single, half double, or double. We're all, we're all pretty good on that. We did have a request to see single again, but yes, single. we also want to see triple crochet. Right. Single's easy. So you probably feel like it's too easy, so you're not understanding it, but it's just really easy. So with crochet, with single crochet, you don't yarn over first. So remember, you just enter the stitch, bring up a loop, now, if I were going to do a single crochet, then I'm done. But for um, decreasing, so we enter, bring up a loop, enter, bring up a loop, yarn over. So it almost seems too easy. So if it seems if you did it and you felt like it was too easy, then you probably did it right. Okay, so I'm going to do a double. Okay, so now for triple. I don't do these very often, so you have to be patient with me and see if I do it right. So we yarn over twice, insert the hook in the next stitch, bring up a loop. Now we have one, two, three, four on the hook. Yarn over, bring it through two, yarn over, bring it through two, Two loops on the hook. And then we yarn over twice, insert into the next hook stitch, yarn over, bring up a loop. We have one, two, three, four, five. Yarn over, bring it through two, yarn over, bring it through two, yarn over, bring it through the last. You know, triple crochet is always a big project, I think, whenever you're working with stitches that big and all those yarn overs and loops. And how does that make you feel? Want to see it again or we want to move on to something else? How are we doing? We did want to see the triple again. Triple again, okay. Okay, 
So triple, with triple, you always start with yarn over twice, insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, bring up a loop, you have four loops, yarn over, bring it through two, yarn over, bring it through two, you have two loops on your hook. Yarn over twice for the next one. Enter the stitch, bring up a loop. You have one, two, three, four, five. Yarn over, bring it through two. Yarn over, bring it through two. Yarn over, bring it through the remaining three. You wanna see how to do three together? So yarn over twice, enter the stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, bring through two, yarn over, bring through two, that's two on there, yarn over twice, enter the stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over two, yarn over, bring it through two, I have three, yarn over twice, wait a second, bring it through two again, so I have two on my hook, yarn over twice, bring up a loop, bring it through two, bring it through two, and then bring it through the final three. You won't I don't think I've ever had to actually do that in a project, but I don't do a lot of lace and I don't do a lot of um, stuff where that would be called for. But then the next one, I'm just gonna do a regular triple. So you can see how that's gonna pull, kind of shape your project and make it into more of a round kind of a curve. It, it distorts the shape of your work, which is just what you want if you're making into a, like a lace, it could be making into a, if you could make it into a crown or it could be any number of things. So that's how you would just to create new shapes. Okay, any, any questions about any of these techniques? I was going to say that Kristen in the chat actually got sort of the logic of decreasing where whatever stitch you're doing, you work up until that very last step. So like for the double crochet, you're still going to have two loops less. And then you would do that same for however many number of stitches you need to decrease and then pull through all those loops at once. Yep. That's what I kind of meant at the beginning. They're almost the same, but they're different. Like, but once you get into the rhythm of it, yeah, it starts to make more sense that way. Yeah. yeah. What other questions do we have? We did want to make sure and go through the cowl pattern. We had a request to show how to work row one of the cowl pattern. All right. And if anybody didn't get the pattern, I'm going to pop it in the chat right now. All right. So for the cowl pattern, I'll get rid of this for my demonstration yarn. And the cow pattern uses this yarn, which is a worsted weight yarn. And I'm using a six millimeter hook. It's actually calling for a, you know, it's calling for a six millimeter. Sometimes I go off a hook, hook side, but not this time. Okay, so. Um, and this Heartland yarn is available on either michaels.com or lionbrands.com. And then this pattern, Claire's gonna put it in the chat, but it's also available for free um, from lionbrand.com. It's, it's called the, um, the Crochet Level 3 Ripple Cow, and it was designed for this class a couple of years ago. And you need two balls of Heartland yarn in two different colors. And um, this pattern's done in uh, yellow stone and Yosemite, but I did mine in a tan and a brown because that's more suitable for me. So you can pick the colors you like, but you do need two colors. 
a J hook um, and large eye blunt needles. And I recommend some stitch markers just because sometimes it can help to have a stitch marker. Um, the stitches we're gonna need to know for this one are double crochet two together, um, half double crochet two together for what we're doing here, okay? Okay, so for the first one, we're going to chain 39 for the first row. I'm not really going to chain 39 because we don't want to waste our life chaining 39 while you're watching me. It's going to chain 13 to start with. So we're going to double crochet in the fourth chain from, let me do maybe a couple extra. Okay, I'll do 23. Just I don't want to run out of stitches if I'm demonstrating. Okay, so we're going to double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So the, the one on the hook doesn't count. They're so one, two, three. We're going to double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. And then we're going to double crochet in the next three chains. One. Two, three. So double crochet. So we end up with four double crochet. And then we're going to double crochet two together twice. So if we look right here, sorry, I don't think I see that. Um, right here is how it refers to it in the pattern double crochet two together. And then it says twice. So we're going to do it. So so yarn over enter the stitch yarn over bring up a loop bring it through two yarn over insert in the next one Bring it through two, bring it through the rest. So yarn over. Okay, how does that look? So double crochet in the next three chains. So double crochet in the next three chains. And then we're going to double crochet. We're going to do two double crochet in each of the next two chains. So we're increasing. So the next one is here. So I'm going to do two double crochets there. And then one more in the same chain. Okay. And then the next one be two double crochets. So you're doing two decreases right next to each other, um, working three stitches and doing two increases right next to each other. And then working three stitches and doing two decreases. So three, 
double crochet. And then double crochet two together. Twice, but I think I'm going to run out of. Squeeze one in there, see if I can make it happen. Okay, so just with this little practice piece that I have, you can see I can try to pull it out straight and it's still kind of wavy. But if you kind of help it into its chevron, you can see it's already starting to take its chevron shape. As you can see right there. Okay. So I'm, I'm not a perfectionist when it comes to my work. And I will admit that just, just because I want everyone to feel comfortable, we're all friends here, right? Nobody's gonna judge. Um, some of these and this cow, I think it looks pretty good, but some of these, I actually didn't do my double, my double decreases exactly the way I showed you. I was kind of skipping a step in the middle of them and it still turned out fine. So if you're making a mistake, if maybe you're not doing it exactly right, guess what? It's probably gonna be fine. Nobody's gonna come up to you and say, oh, you did your double decrease wrong right there. So you don't, you know, don't, don't, you know, just keep practicing. It's more important that you keep practicing and learning each time and each time you make it, it'll be better and better. So don't, don't let any little mistakes get in your way or hold you back. Okay, any questions about anything we've done today so far? We're pretty much through everything. We're actually finishing early, which I thought I was gonna run really late on this class. So we do have time to review if anyone. Oh, see, Darren, you shouldn't have said that because now we need to see the second row of the pattern. <laughs> the second row. And I would probably also throw in there. I know people are going to have questions if you need to carry the color up the edge of the cowl. That's that's actually a very good idea. So I will show you this. So on my edge, you can see how I carried the second color up the edge because you don't want to have to cut it and weave in edges, weave in all those ends. So that's not going to be noticeable on the edge of your cap. Nobody's going to see it when you're wearing it because it's going to kind of slump down a little bit like that. So I'll show you how to, I'm not sure if I'm set up here right to start the second. I think I'm supposed to be at a increase when I start the second round or the second row. But let's look at it here and see. So we're, with the second one, we're still using the same color. With color A, you chain three, and that counts as your first double crochet. So turning your work, um, and this is having you work in the back loops only. So it's, I can demonstrate how to do that on this little swatch that I have. So chain three, working in the back loops only, double crochet in the first stitch, and then double crochet in the next three stitches. And the reason it's written that way, um, it wants you to double crochet in the first stitch and then double crochet in the next three. Um, instead of telling you to double crochet four, is because in the pattern, you're gonna get, become very comfortable with double crocheting three, doing your increases, double crochet three, doing your decreases. So they're just having you, they're just keeping it in groups of three the be as best they can, instead of adding a group of four at the beginning. So that's why it's written that way. It might seem a little confusing at first. So we're gonna double crochet three, double crochet one, I'm sorry. And I didn't do it in the back loop. And then we're gonna double crochet three in the back loop. So if you hold your work like this, so 
you can see the back loop. So if you hold it like this when you're when you're working on it, you don't go through here like normal. It's something new. So you're just going through the back loop. Now what have I done? I wasn't paying attention. So okay, I did four. So double crochet four, basically. And then it wants us to double crochet two together twice. So double crochet two together twice, and then double crochet in the next three stitches. So you're gonna have this grouping of working at three stitches as you progress. So double crochet two together twice. Always working in the back loop. And then double crochet three. And one thing I will tell you, when you start reading this pattern, it's gonna seem like a lot of steps and it's gonna seem very confusing. And that's, that's how it was for me. Um, and I'm not really good at memorizing stuff, but by the time I got through a couple of rows, I had it memorized. So you can use post-it notes to kind of keep track of where you are or maybe you can mark something with a pencil to kind of help keep track of what you're doing when. But by the time you get like through two or three, four or five rows, you're really going to have it memorized. Um, pretty amazing. And then now I'm going to sorry, do my two increases. So double crochet in the same stitch twice. And do that two times. So you're working two decreases and working three stitches, and then you're working two increases and working two three stitches. So it's pretty much that's pretty much the pattern. So now I'm going to work three stitches. I'm going to do my decreases. I think I'm going to run out of room again. No, I got it. Now I'm going to change to my brown. I had to move my computer. I ended up moving everything. Else. So here's the brown. Now this is um, important on how to change colors. So I'm going to back out of that. So I'm going to do my, this is the second part of my decrease. So I'm going to pull it through two. And then I'm not going to use the, for the last step, I'm going to let this tan drop. And you pick up the brown here, just put it over your hook. And you just pull that through. And that's going to give you a nice clean stripe. Now I'm going to chain two because the next row is half double. So you can see how that gives a nice clean stripe right there. I'm changing color. And then it's pretty much the same pattern. We, in the back loop, we half double one. And then we half double three, and it's written that way to keep it in groups of three. See, I'm trying to do double because I've been doing double. So it's really hard sometimes to keep track when you're switching from half double to double. So you do have to pay attention. So one, two. Three. So if you're not paying attention, your hands will want to mix them up. 
So any questions about how to do any of the increases or decreases? Do you want to see me rejoin the yarn again for the new color? What, what would be the most helpful thing? All right, so here, I'm gonna do my decrease. Oh, wait a minute, I have, I'm gonna do a double crochet and then my decrease. So for the decrease, you pull through two and then you yarn over and you pull through three, but I'm not gonna use my tan yarn to yarn over and pull through the last set. I'm just, and to add the yarn, you don't do anything fancy. You don't have to tie a knot or join it in any way, really. You just kind of grab it with your hook and pull it through. And guess what? It's joined. Um, you do want to leave a long enough tail, though, so that you can weave it in later. So you want to leave a tail about four to six inches long. And then you're ready to chain two to build the height for your next row. And that's going to give you a nice clean stripe. You're not going to have any of the, the beige going up into the brown stripe. Does that make sense? Do you want to see it again? Or what are we? I think maybe you're in the right place to answer Sylvia's question about carrying the yarn up the side. Okay, let me. I'm just going to cheat and just do a couple stitches and turn back. I'm not really going to follow the pattern, so don't. Just so I can quickly get back to there and bring the tan up the side. So pretend I'm working in pattern. I finished I'm working across the row. Everything's going normal. Okay, and I'm going to do a half double. So for half double, yarn over, enter the stitch, yarn over, bring it through, but we're going to, so just let that brown drop and just bring the beige up and you don't want to pull it tight. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm just splitting my yarn. So yarn over, bring it through, end of that last stitch, yarn over, let the brown drop, pick up the tan, bring it through and then chain up the appropriate number of chains. And then you just, you wanna make sure that you're leaving enough slack. And right here, when you do your chain, you might wanna stop and just kind of pull it a little bit just to make sure you don't want too much slack because you don't want it to look like that, but you don't want it too tight either or else it really will cause your work to pucker. So the best way to do it really is to just be very relaxed, let that hang down, bring this up. And so you can see I'm kind of holding that where the tan joins to the row below it, I'm holding it there so it's not gonna have a chance to pull tight. And then when I pull it through, Start over so that looks like it makes sense to me. Sorry. So hold it here, pull it through, and you you don't want to let it come up. So right here, before you continue, just make sure it's it's comfortable. It looks it doesn't look too loose or too slack or too tight. And then do your chains. And then once you do your chain three, it's pretty much locked into place. So it's not going to have a chance to be pulled tight, but you might want to just kind of double check right there until you get the hang of it. Does that help? Does that make sense? You want to see it again? I think we'll 
wait to see if any other questions come in. And I just wanted to remind everybody that this class is being recorded. And so tomorrow you'll be able to watch it on michaels.com slash classes or on the Michaels YouTube channel. And you can go back and watch the Crochet 101 and 102 classes there as well. You can stop and pause and rewind everything. Yep. And if you do have any questions and you want to contact me, you can find me on Instagram. Um, it's Mr. Woolly Bear and it's Mr. spelled out M-I-S-T-E-R Woolly Bear. Claire will put that in the chat for you. And you can send me a direct message and I usually try to get back to people pretty quick. So if you have any, if you need any more support or if something wasn't explained quite clearly enough, which could very well be the case. Okay, any other questions? Looks like we've got some class suggestions coming in here. We do have some more classes coming up. Sadly, none of them are crochet classes. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, but for the knitters, if there are any knitters in the crowd, we have next Monday coming up, Fixing Mistakes in Knitting. That's always a good class to take. And then in November, the November 2nd, we have a class on knit socks. And then November 9th is steaking or how to cut apart your knitting. I am going to steak crochet in that one as well. Oh, there we go. And um, we do have the crochet. Um, we crocheted the hats um, in a previous class. So you can find, if you want to learn how to do crocheted hats, you can find our um, one of our older classes and watch the recorded video for that one. Yeah. And if the recorded videos, you don't see them on the michaels.com slash classes page, they might have gotten pushed down a little bit, but you can search for them on their YouTube channel and they'll pop up there. Oh, let's see, we've got another quick question before we go. Um, Jackie wants to know how you hold your yarn when you crochet. Okay. Um, I just, however it feels comfortable in your hand, there's not really a right way or wrong way. I hold mine like this between my middle finger and my um, ring finger. And then I use my pointer finger to kind of guide it. So that's how I do it. And it, it just kind of slides in between. I don't, I know some people like do all kinds of, like I'm afraid I'll cut the circulation off in my hand if I, I don't know what all that's for. But some people like to do that. They wrap it around their hand or their fingers and they tension it through there. If that's what works for you, that's perfect. Um, but you just want to find a way that's comfortable. And I think that's the way my mother holds hers. So that's why I do it that way. So I hold mine and I just kind of hold my ring finger against it, I'm kind of pinning it between my middle finger and my ring finger. And then I tension it that way. And then I use this pointer finger as a kind of a guide for it. But there's no right or wrong way. If, you, if you're holding it in your hand and you're able to, to guide it to your hook, then you're doing it right. So don't get hung up on you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it you don't have to do it the way somebody else is doing it you just hold it how it's comfortable in your hand and you can try other ways if you want to but don't don't worry about that don't let that slow you down anything else Uh, we did have a couple questions on the patterns from the older classes. I'm not sure if they're saved on the Michaels class page, but they're all available on lionbrand.com. Um, if you just search like crochet level one, level two, or level three, you'll be able to find the mitts, the hat, and the cowl. Yes. Yeah. All righty. And the, like I said, the recording will be up tomorrow. Um, I think the recordings are available for at least 30 days, but they should be available longer on the Michaels YouTube channel if they're not linked on their website. 